Like It Mothers. I am here in Maryland at a retreat for foster and adoptive moms, and I'm so excited that it's giving me an opportunity to interview a woman that I greatly admire, Jenny Alowo, who is an advocate for children in foster care. Hey, Jenny. Hi. Thank you so much for doing this. Yeah, happy to. So one of the things that few people know is what children go through when they are first brought into foster care. Of course, you can imagine this is one of the most traumatic days in the child's life. They're removed from their home, from their parents, from everything that they know. Whatever's going on to cause them to be removed was traumatic and shocking and upsetting. Often the police are involved. Imagine one of your children suddenly be taken from your home. Not to see you, no explanation. Just carry a few things, whatever you can carry, maybe in a plastic bag. You've heard about kids carrying stuff in black plastic bags. Maybe it's the middle of the night and they get in the back of a police car. Have you ever thought about what comes next? Where does the child go? Jenny faced the same situation when she became involved in advocating with her husband for kids in foster care. Tell us a little bit about your journey and how you discovered what happens to kids in that situation. Yeah, so we became foster parents a couple of years ago. We have we were the foster parents of little kids, like two and under. And so I didn't know a whole lot about older kids, teenagers, the kids, sibling groups that are harder to place. Um, and so it wasn't until we started our nonprofit, BCS Together, that we found out um, Child Protective Services, where we live in Texas, would call our friend, who's also an advocate and a foster mom, um, because they would say, hey, we have this teenager who's sleeping at the Child Protective Service office, and there's no shower there. There's, no, there's just regular bathrooms. It's like an office building that they rent, you know, not even a very nice office building. <laughs> So they would drive 30 minutes from the Child Protective Service office to my friend's house. She lives in a beautiful farmhouse. She has her, you know, biological kids and they actually have adopted recently. But this teenager would have to come in and see their family, you know, eating dinner or playing mm -hmm. games or having mm -hmm. family time mm -hmm. and use their shower. She said often they would shower for like 45 minutes. Ooh. I think they just, you know. Typical teenager. Yeah. They but just... also... <laughs> Teenagers is happy to be in a beautiful yes, shower. Yes, enjoying their peace and quiet in there. Yes. So they would shower and then go right back to the Child Protective Service office where they sleep on an air mattress in the conference room with the two CPS caseworkers. So that you're clear, when the child was taken into care, the system has nowhere to put that child. Yes, if there's not a placement, you know... They'll try, usually these were late at night phone calls because they try, right. unless it happened late at night and it's the next day. Right. But it would be like dinner time that they would want to bring them over because they worked all day to try to find a residential treatment center, a family, whatever they needed for the kid. And when they can't, then they have to sleep at the office. So five o'clock comes, business is closing, so mm -hmm. to speak. They've taken this child into care. They can't find a room for the night. So you're telling me, literally, the child sleeps on the floor mm -hmm. in the government office. Is this a nice, swanky, right? <laughs> this is what you would imagine yep. a Child Protective Services office is like. And I've been told this also adds to the trauma of the child mm -hmm. because not only is the child right there sleeping on the floor, maybe on an air mattress, maybe in a chair, but they're hearing the worker calling. Yeah, exactly. Do you have a place for this child? Do you have a place? Do you have a place? Do you have a place? So the child's first entry into mm. the system, into the life of being a foster child is hearing that there's no place for you. Yep. We have no place for you. I can't even imagine any of my kids, even my grown kids going through something like that. Yeah. It's heartbreaking. Yeah. So what did you do being the wonderful woman <laughs> that you are? You said, this must end. We can do something about this. Yeah, so it actually, our dream, I think, as a team was like five to ten years from now to figure something out. But we actually have someone on our team who, like, she has teenage boys. So it really mm -hmm. hit her at home. Like how you said, imagine your own kids. That's what she yes. was doing. She was imagining her own boys yes. going through that. And she said, I can't live like this. Right. So the first right. call she did was we called Child Protective Services and said, hey, could we build a bathroom with a shower at your office and with all the red tape and government whatever they said no and they just leased the building i mean it's a really old not very nice place 
And so her and her husband actually own a home that they said, you know what, we have this home that we were going to, you know, use for renters, but we'd actually like to donate it to wow. the ministry so these kids can have a place to stay. Amazing. And so, but even beyond that, she talked with an interior decorator that she's good friends with and said, hey, would you donate your services? Because our ministry's philosophy is we want to give these kids dignity and worth and yes. everything, whether it's an item of clothing we have that's donated all the way to like where they're staying. We have very high standards like for the items that we take as donations. So we wanted this place to be brand new, like not have used furniture, yes. not yes. have like a hodgepodge. Yes. Um, and so this decorator said yes. She put together like dream boards. You know, you see like fancy decorators right. do these like dream boards. Yes. We posted them online to our community, just local community, and said like kind of what you said. Most people had no idea this was happening. Right. So it exploded right. as soon as people heard like there are kids sleeping down the street from you at the office. So we actually had all the rooms sponsored in less than a week. It was like wow. probably close to $18,000. It was wow. realtors, a daycare owner, um, football coaches, wives, uh, of another foster family. I mean, it was every genre of person you can imagine like came together to actually help us buy the brand new things for the Haven. And what's so beautiful about that is people who would never mm -hmm. foster, right? Yep. Would never get involved in that way. Exactly. But man, you ask some church ladies to decorate, <laughs> they're on it. Now, what I love about this idea is, in your case, someone actually donated a home for you to use, mm -hmm. but I have another friend who's a minister, Terry Froman, in Tennessee, and her church did this at their church. So the children are brought to the church. So within their church, they created this ecosystem within the church where the children can be brought. The worker has a place to work. Mm -hmm. You have refreshments, right? I mean, imagine the church ladies. Can, will you foster a child? No. Will you bake cookies for a child who's waiting to find a foster home? Of course I will. It's just an, it's a beautiful mm -hmm. solution. What are some of the things that you have done to bring comfort to the children as they're spending time in the Haven? Yeah, so we had like the Girl Scout troops. They donated a Nintendo Switch, so they'd have like a gaming ah. system. We have a Disney Plus subscription, so that wow. we actually joke. So a lot of people also don't know the caseworkers have to stay up all night for accountability while the child sleeps. So like you were saying, the wow. five o'clock, there's the daytime shift, there's the five to midnight shift, and then there's a midnight to eight a.m. shift. And these caseworkers have to volunteer on their own to like stay there with the kid. Um, obviously, they get paid overtime or something, but they're away from their families, not getting to sleep all night. And so we wanted it to bless the caseworkers as much as the kid. And so wow. we have, That's I mean, beautiful. the first night it was used, the caseworkers were sending us like selfies with their favorite candy and the wow. snacks. And they said it was just like a really amazing place for the what kids. But like the, the first girl who used it, they were with us for three weeks. So she had been at the office sleeping. So wow. she'd run away. They found her homeless on the streets in Houston and then brought her back to where we live. And they were, they could not find like residential treatment centers are so full right now that sometimes these teens are staying for 10, 15, 20 days because they can't find any places for them. Wow. So imagine going through the most traumatic experience and then having nowhere to go, sleeping in a government office, having no comfort, being taken somewhere else to take a shower. Mm -hmm. How do you manage um, feeding them the meals? Tell us how that works. Yeah, so we do a couple of different things. We have, we've posted like, just on local like restaurant Facebook groups like where we live about it. And so people have brought by gift cards. Restaurant owners have brought gift cards. The community has. We've asked for some of them like the caseworkers like to cook mm -hmm. with the teens. And so they've specifically asked us for grocery gift cards so they can actually cook a meal. Because now they're not at the office. They actually yeah. can cook like in a home. That's great. Uh, like this particular girl's diabetic. So she had like a really specific diet and they no longer had to just feed her fast food, you know. So we've had, we just post like... 2021 we have this vision of just saying we're taking back hope for 2021 so we had a goal of 21 we're gift cards back hope. yeah so we had 21 gift cards donated by different people That's um, and so and then we have actually what you were saying earlier about church ladies there's a group of 80 year old women that said hey we want to take care of all the snacks and like goodies the one lady used to own a bakery and so oh, they I like fully stocked the haven with all the snacks 
And after they stayed, the snacks were the most eaten thing. So she just, this 80-year-old lady, here she did, brought Look at all the snacks over there. Look at that. An 80-year-old yeah. woman probably isn't going to foster or adopt, but she has a place yep. in this. This is exactly. beautiful. What would you say to someone who's watching this video thinking, oh, I wish we could do that at our church? And it just took that believing everybody can do something. And so yes. whether it's somebody who owns an apartment building that has a could give an empty apartment or a church could convert a room in their church yes um and like we're saying I think whether whatever people's different gifting is like my best friend she's an artist and so she's actually painting these little tiny canvases that I she was really that. hoping for these kids that don't have much that they can have something really nice with like a scripture on the wow. back to take with them and that's like so simple and that's it doesn't cost so her much you know meaningful. so yeah I would say Beautiful. Everybody has a part to play in helping yes. these kids like feel loved and know that they like what you were saying earlier with all the phone calls yes. They hear all the there's no place for you. There's no place for you. There's no place for you yes. So even if they're only with us three days, they have like the best food and like the most comfortable place They get mm. to have fun They can take books with them that we have there if they want to read it But we want them to leave feeling like wow for those couple days. I yeah, experienced the love, love of Jesus. Me. Yeah, wow Thank you so much, Jenny. Yeah. It's beautiful what you're doing. I hope many, many more people will do yeah, we what do you've too. done, sister. Awesome. Take care.